about are the latest update to the Opencast player. I will try if I can get a real uh, presentation up uh, and running, uh, but I'm not 100% sure how it works with the Wi-Fi here. So, um, yeah, so we have the Opencast 2.x player, that's the HTML5 player that you probably have seen. So I skip the part where I introduce myself. So I'm Rudiger Rolf from the uh, Osnabrück, uh, University of Osnabrück. You saw some of my colleagues already, and I guess I know several of you already. So um, you might know even the media module. We have not seen changes uh, for that within uh, since the branching off of 2.0. But now it has a um, title optics and it's a uh, little bit more uh, responsive in its design. So, but in a general, it's very basic. So we don't intend to offer a full feature portal. We only offer a search of recordings. And with 2.0, we entered a navigation by series. But that's all. As I said, we have a responsive design now. So um, if you have a smaller uh, view on it, so on your mobile phone or whatever, you see just one title. You have an endless scrolling, so that it's quite easy to use there, I would say. Um, and um, I just want, I hope that I can manage to get the player working in a way uh, that I can show the most important features. I managed to get my browser on the screen. <laughs> okay, that's fair to say. Um, so, um, what has changed uh, during the last year? We finally managed to get a better uh, video display management. So if you, for example, want to increase the view of one of the um, uh, views, you can simply click on it. Uh, we have the idea that you focus a video. So if you have more than two streams, uh, you have all the others as small ones, and you select one of them to focus it. Um, we have a picture-in-picture view. If you prefer it otherwise, you can uh, selected to be next to each other. Um, other videos would align uh, below the small videos uh, in here. Um, so yeah, so I said that's uh, one of the features. As last said, we not introduced but adopted the um, adaptive playback rate a little bit more. So we listened to our students. We removed the 50% as lecturers did not like to sound a little bit drunken when you play it that slow. Um, and we added speeds up to 300% of the regular time uh, in the default dropdown. So 300% um, is not really usable if you want to listen to the content, but it allows uh, fast screening if you already have been to the lecture and want to find something. Uh, additional to this, we also added um, more keyboard shortcuts so that uh, you can even, in a much finer grained way, um, select your playback speed every 12%. So uh, we even offer more features here now with, uh, for people who are familiar in using the keyboard. Um, yeah, so that is um, the changes for the regular player and um, what we introduced with 2.2 is the video zoom. So here we created um, very high resolution content and uh, we thought it might be beneficial if you are really able to zoom into the uh, chartboard and uh, select what you want to see. I could press play but I'm not sure if it would play at the moment as the video needs a little bit bandwidth as you might uh, be able to imagine. Um, we've seen as we have this in production use in Osnabrück for uh, let's say three to four months now that even with presentations and so on where as a regular user you would say that um, um, yeah your students uh, could read it um, 
people with disabilities and so on are very happy to have the opportunity to zoom a little bit closer. Uh, for the future, for sure, we have to make sure, or everybody of us, if you want to use this feature, that you provide the media in a high enough resolution, maybe with cutdowns in playback rate and so on for the lower qualities, if you use um, multi-quality so that's not in the default uh, workflows. But here, for example, we cut down in our default settings for 4K video now uh, to 12 or 80 frames. But um, that's an optional setting, not what Opencast is delivering at the moment. Um, OK. Um, let's continue my presentation. That's what I showed in the live presentation. Um, still, to mention here, uh, keyboard control is full available during the whole player, so every function, even more, is available with keyboard control than with the UIs. Um, as I said, if you have more than two streams, uh, they is, is also be doable. It does not look that well if you put them next to each other at the moment. And uh, not ready as a pull request, but very close would be that we updated the mobile view of the player for a smartphone. And that would mean that um, we now have a nice uh, multi-stream support, so you can slide it over. We have now implemented the multi-quality uh, issue. Um, as I said, you can swipe up to three, four streams or whatever. You don't need more bandwidth, as we are only playing one video at a time. Um, I guess Carlos better than me knows to how overcome the problem of uh, displaying multiple videos uh, on a mobile phone. What is usually not doable, it might work in some edge cases, but it's not reliable. And we, at the moment, focused on mobile phones, but we don't think that it's um, um, yeah a very good idea to play more than two videos at once at all, as you don't have as have, you only have limited space. So we have a full screen mode activated more or less automatically as soon as you play and so on. So I guess I'm quite good in my time. And if anybody has questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Otherwise. Um, I'm especially interested in the 4K stream and just wanted to ask if you have any difficulties um, developing this feature because I already saw it a few weeks ago your test platform with this video and was I was quite impressed and that's a feature we really want to have at Münster. So um, there's later on in the conference a uh, talk from my or a discussion round I would say from my colleague Christri Christian um, uh, about 4k and I guess uh, others like um, we have made experience with 4K cameras and so on. At the moment, it's hard to say that it's ready. So um, you have many 4K cameras, is, would be what I say, but um, we have mixed experience with this. And that's my uh, outlook on his session, <laughs> where you might hear more. But in general, it is doable, and we think that, especially for the growing demands that we see that our mathematicians and so on, want to stay with a blackboard, uh, it is a good solution as usually for blackboards are doable with at the zoom function and um, I guess it's a nice uh, point to give the user control about what he wants to see. Okay, thanks. Well, uh, first of all, thanks for, for this uh, new feature. In it, It's very user-friendly uh, uh, user in that, as you say, many, many teachers will still uh, work with the blackboard today, and, and that's certainly something we have been looking for for quite some time. I wanted to ask you about um, in video, in slide search. Um, if, if that's not something you can show because of the the Wi-Fi, maybe you can talk about whether that is relevant to you. The the idea of of searching slides and then highlighting parts of the video which which contain certain parts, or is that something that is is not a, a focus for you? Any more? Um, I guess it will become more 
uh, important when we um, go to um, uh, the um, uh, speech inclusion in a way. So if people upload captions, what is at the moment not very good supported in Opencast 2.0. Um, and uh, then you might have more information. Uh, I would uh, say that uh, let's, um, for what we currently have with uh, slide text, the browser offers all the functionality that you might need when you simply say that you want to search on your uh, uh, slide. But um, in general, it will become more useful, yes. Um, the um, Media module still offers the uh, possibility to search on every information that is given within um, the search data that you added. So that is the OCR from the slides, for example. So you will find the recordings, but at the moment we did not really feature on the uh, point that we had in the old uh, stuff where you could search within the current recording as I guess uh, if you have plain text there it is doable without an additional interface that we create. If we have um, more information as I said like uh, the speech data that will become ne uh, necessary for sure again. Um. Uh, how did you set up uh, the different um, stream qualities? Do you just convert them in one workflow and they just plop into the interface or do you need to set up something special for that? Um, in general, with the multi-qualities, uh, you can create them in several ways. So uh, as a special need, we created a parallel encoding workflow a while ago in Osnabrück as our um, server infrastructure was an art or uh, uh, working as the old one where we um, created the different qualities uh, sequentially. So now we use FFmpeg to create all the qualities in one encoding step. Even if um, your setup is powerful enough, you will save uh, around a third of the time as uh, you only have to decode the source video once. And how to get them in here is very simple. You tag it. So. Um, you can add um, during the process within the workflows tags, and if the tag ends with minus quality, so you have low minus quality, you have high minus quality, you have, uh, in my example here, 4K minus quality, all these qualities will show up there. So you can have 20 qualities if you want to and find it reasonable, but every, as I said, um, that's a filter that we want that uh, you have in quality tag there and that will be selected. And if you have a medium quality that will currently be the preferred one, we probably have to include in the configuration option something where you can set priority for what to use and what not, but yeah. Okay. <laughs>